Our guest tonight is Ring of Honor star Adam Cole, baby! How you doing tonight, man? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing great, man. How are you guys? L listen, I, g I gave you the best intro I could possibly give you. I yelled like an asshole. So that's what, no, that's all. you did not. It was excellent on so many levels. You should be proud of that introduction. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Obviously, the biggest news from the week was Ring of Honor's announcement that the company will be on Destination America Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. starting June 3rd. Uh, what is your reaction to the news, and what is the general feeling amongst other wrestlers in the locker room regarding the move oh man i was shocked uh, I, I was just as floored as everybody else was um uh, ring of our offices uh kept everyone in the dark as far as what was going on but the excitement level uh through the talent and how everyone feels and how amped we are i mean we've been working so hard for an opportunity like this this is a giant step forward for us i think we're going to be an additional uh 57 million homes now so just the the accessibility and the viewership uh, potential uh, for Ring of Honor now is much stronger. But this is something that uh, our entire team has worked very hard for. We feel that we deserve it, and we're not going to give anybody any reason to believe that we should not be on a national cable television platform. Mike Yari? Uh, well, like you said, uh, ROH's partnership with Destination America, it really kind of came as a huge surprise uh, to those who follow the business. And I think that's that's mostly due to the fact that TNA uh, came to the channel pretty recently. Uh, and it seems like a lot of the talent have differing opinions uh, about what it means for both companies. But how do you view it personally? Do, do you feel like it's competition between the two promotions? Uh, or do you look at it as more of a partnership on the same channel? Well, I actually don't really look at it as either. Uh, and what I mean by that is I think Ring of Honor has gotten to where it's gotten because it focuses solely on making itself better, um, especially throughout 2014 to 2015. Uh, Ring of Honor has, um, I don't want to say lived in our own bubble because we're very aware of what's going on outside, but we're very focused about internally making ourselves better, whether that be our production or our talent or the matches, or the storylines, or whatever it is. We're, we're very hyper-focused on that. So we try not to get too wrapped up into the entire uh, competition thought process. But uh, the entire thing is very exciting for pro wrestling, I think. I, I think the, uh, the idea now that you have Ring of Honor on before TNA Impact, uh, that's three hours of wrestling potentially on a, on a cable television network on Wednesday nights. Um, but again, it's not a partnership either. You know, I don't think we're, we're not affiliated with TNA whatsoever. We're focused on us. It just so happens that we're on right before TNA. But as far as uh, being a wrestling fan goes, I think it's, a, it's a, an exciting time for them. And as far as us, like I said, we are just so hyper-focused on doing what we can to make sure that this is uh, successful as possible for us. BG? Best in the World is coming up in a few weeks, uh, the weekend of June 19th, and you've been one of the top performers at this event for Ring of Honor historically. And it was announced that the Kingdom will face the Bullet Club, but I think most would agree the focus will be on you mixing it up again with AJ Styles, since you guys clearly have a special chemistry. Now in a multi-man match, though, would you prefer the opportunity to wrestle in a singles match against him, or are you excited about the opportunities offered in the six-man tag? Uh, I think the six man has a lot of potential uh, to be something really special. You know, anytime there's more bodies in there, uh, especially it being the other bodies being the young bucks. And then uh, my kingdom partners, Matt Taven and Michael Bennett. I think that creates a really cool, exciting, different dynamic. Uh, of course, the chance to wrestle AJ in another one-on-one -on -one encounter would be awesome. I, I really enjoyed our match in Toronto and uh, for much more special reasons, I really enjoyed our match in Philadelphia. So to get the chance to wrestle him on, a pay-per-view scenario would be really, really cool. But I think as far as fans who like a car crash and really exciting six-man uh, Ring of Honor wrestling action, this match is definitely going to deliver that. So I'm looking forward to the six-man match at the pay-per-view. Mike Chiari? Uh Yeah, you've had a lot of memorable moments uh, during your time in ROH, but your fight without honor against Jay Briscoe for the world title in December uh, was easily one of the best matches of the year. It received a, a ton of praise from fans. Um, why do you feel like yourself and Jay have such great chemistry in the ring? Uh, and what's your level of interest in kind of rekindling that feud in the near future? Yeah, I, I think I, I cut an interview where I talked about me and Jay are like uh, Batman and Joker before. And uh, I really feel that way. I don't, think, I don't think the feud between me and Jay will ever die. I think when you look at the two characters, 
they're just such polar opposites, and that's why I think uh, it attracts so well. I, I think initially, too, that was the real interest from the Ring of Honor fan base about the battles that me and Jay had was it, it wasn't traditionally in Ring of Honor. You have two of the best going at it to see who number one is. Me and Jay just had so many different dynamics that we could play off of. Fortunately, we had uh, a really extended amount of time to build up to this fight without honor. You know, this wasn't a scenario where we had three months to build to a fight without honor. We had been feuding up to this point, I think, for like a year and a half. So uh, the story, the backstory was there. It was kind of uh, easier than we anticipated to put certain things into place to really tell that story and get the fans invested and get the, uh, the fans behind everything. I, I just think, again, this is a classic scenario where whether it's Adam Cole or Jay Briscoe in a wrestling ring on a television show or in a movie, it just clicks because the characters are so different. BBG? Speaking of Jay Briscoe, we've noticed how many more fans are starting to turn on wrestlers during long stretches of being on top. It happened to John Cena, CM Punk, and many more before them. As one of the top young wrestlers in the world, and you being a huge fan growing up of Shawn Michaels, what is your take and perception when you see fans starting to turn on their former favorites? Uh, I, I think it's just a classic scenario of people generally like the underdog and like to uh, jump on a bandwagon, per se, and say, hey, we're going to get behind this guy before he makes it big. Uh, it's exciting to want something different. Everybody, whether they realize it or not, does want change. So I think over time, it's just a reality in the nature of the beast, kind of, that people want something different as opposed to uh, you know, getting the same thing they see all the time. It by no means means that Jay Briscoe is doing a bad job. I mean, he's, uh, his, he's true and tested being with the company since the very beginning. So everyone, I think, very much respects Jay Briscoe. But uh, like anybody who's involved with any sort of entertainment, like I said, generally speaking, people do like change. So I think it's just a, a situation where maybe the Ring of Honor fans want something a little different. Well, at the end of 2014, you suffered a shoulder injury that temporarily derailed an incredible two-year run. Uh, you recently returned to Ring of Honor and look to be performing at an, an elite level once again. Uh, how is the shoulder holding up, and can you describe the injury and your recovery process? Yeah, sure. Uh, th this injury goes back to actually me getting a little bit more detailed. Uh, I had been wrestling with a fracture in my elbow and a partially torn tricep for probably a year and a half to two years. Uh, I had continued to work through it because I knew that I was about to get a run with the Ring of Honor world title. Um, I was still PWG world champion. So I needed to just continue to work through everything uh, and try to have a really, really good uh, run with the belt. Um, and then unfortunately, I dislocated my shoulder um, at a pro wrestling gorilla event. Um, and I popped it back in and finished the match, thought I was going to be okay. Long story short, I went and got an MRI. It was a torn labrum, which is a really vital tendon in the shoulder um, that could cause problems with your bicep and tricep and even neck uh, down the line. So it was something that I needed to get fixed, which I opted to get fixed um, after Ring of Honor's final battle. And the rehab process was more mentally draining than it was physically. I thought the physical part was easy. I mean, of course, it hurt and rehab got redundant. Uh, but it was more the idea of sitting out while uh, all this great stuff was going on and wanting to be back in there. Um, I also did hit some uh, hiccups in my recovery process where the doctor told me it may be smart for me to come back in June. So there really was a scare there for a minute that I was not going to be able to do the Ring of Honor New Japan shows. Uh, but fortunately, I was able to let the thing rest up and come back uh, at Philadelphia Best in the World. I, I'm being kind of eased into my schedule until June just to make sure that my shoulder uh, holds up okay. It felt fine. Uh, but the most difficult thing was not being able to train in a ring whatsoever. So it was like when I wrestled AJ, um, that was the first time I was between the ropes at all in five months. I hadn't done any wrestling training or anything like that. So it was really nerve wracking, not even so much that my shoulder was going to hold up, but that, uh, <laughs> that I was going to be able to perform. But fortunately for me, wrestling is kind of like riding a bike. It was like the second, uh, the second I got in there, everything just kind of clicked and came back, fortunately. Mike Yari? Uh, one of the biggest stories in wrestling right now is Samoa Joe's uh, WWE debut at NXT TakeOver and the fact that he's also still permitted to work with other companies like ROH. Um, that type of freedom is pretty unprecedented as it relates to WWE. Uh, so if that ultimately becomes the new norm, uh, how do you think that might impact performers 
uh, and their willingness to make the, the jump to a brand like NXT. Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting. I mean, obviously, Samoa Joe, is, he's the first one to get a contract uh, of this kind, and it sounds very appealing to a lot of different people. So I think a lot of it depends on um, how willing Triple H and WWE and NXT is willing to give guys deals like this. Uh, and then obviously it'll be interesting to see the route that guys go. You know, I, I know a lot of guys uh, like myself are very happy at Ring of Honor, but obviously you never say never with things. So I think the entire landscape, the problem with this scenario is that it's so hard to predict. Um, because now the you know, Ring of Honor is going to be on Destination America. A lot of people are wondering if Samoa Joe can even work our television show. I, I have more questions than answers when it comes to stuff like that, but it certainly is going to create a real feeling of suspense and excitement in pro wrestling that I think we haven't had for quite some time. Like the idea of you're not knowing where people are going to show up, when they're going to show up, who they're going to be wrestling for is like – similar to the way it was in the Attitude Era. So I think this is just a really exciting, cool time for wrestling because you really never know where anybody's going to show up. BG? Um, you've been a favorite of ours for a very long time now. We see you as a future megastar in the business. And over the years, you've really developed into one of the top all-around performers and someone with great intensity. But are there any areas you feel you need to improve on or would call a weakness? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I, you know, I've said this before. I think that... Uh, the, I mean, the, the second you uh, stop thinking that you need to improve, I mean, then you've, then you've capped off and then you really can't progress and get better. So there are 100% are areas. Uh, as far as something outside of the ring, I certainly feel um, while sitting out with the shoulder injury, I'd like to get myself back into the best shape that I possibly could. I'm looking to come into the pay-per-view uh, in the best shape I've been in in a while. Um, just definitely trying to get myself um not only back to where I was, but better than where I was. I, I think one of the one of the things with me for a long time was I had such a quick metabolism. So I think my metabolism is finally slowing down. So I think I'll be able to really work on uh, that aspect of my game right now because cosmetically is um, that's just as important as stuff in the ring. But I'm always trying to improve uh, my promo work. I, I'm so passionate about promos and wrestling because I think a good interview is uh, really make or break for a lot of guys. And always trying to improve on stuff in the ring. Like it, it's it's so tough to necessarily pinpoint one area um, specifically as far as in ring stuff that goes because I'm always trying to get better. You know, every time I go back and watch my own stuff, I find 10 million things that I would change. But that's the fun part about wrestling is there's no such thing as being perfect. Everyone's always trying to get better all the time. So there are definitely areas of my game that. I'll continue to work on and continue to improve on in every area of improvement for me. All right, final question. You have attended tryouts for WWE in the past. With the success of former independent stars like Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Neville, uh, how has NXT helped change the perception for wrestlers trying to make the jump to the WWE? And does a run in NXT interest you when your time in ROH comes or close, whenever that is? Yeah, the uh, the entire game change with NXT here is just that I feel that, again, that pro wrestlers are running the industry. Um, in every area now, whether it be WWE, whether it be Ring of Honor, um, the international exposure that the states have gotten lately, it really seems that the guys who are at the top are genuine, uh, born and bred pro wrestlers. So it's a really exciting time for guys. Uh, no matter their shape or size, if you're a good pro wrestler, it seems like not only will you have a job, but you'll be able to make a very solid living as a pro wrestler. Um, with NXT going, you know, I, I've said this all the time. Uh, anyone who says they don't want to have a WrestleMania moment someday is totally kidding themselves. Um, so, of course, I would entertain the idea of getting the opportunity to work for WWE someday because NXT is indeed, uh, indeed the I think catalysts are your best shot at getting up to the main roster. But with the way that things are going with Ring of Honor and how good Ring of Honor has been to me throughout this injury, and since I started with them back in 2010, uh, I'm, I'm not even thinking about the WWE right now. I, I'm totally focused on what we got going on with Ring of Honor. I'm still young. I'm 25 years old. Um, the relationship with Ring of Honor in New Japan is fantastic. The, you know, the fact that Ring of Honor's just gotten this new television deal has really changed the game. 
So you never know. Um, if Ring of Honor continues to grow the way that it is, I think it'll be a legitimate place for guys to make a serious living in pro wrestling for years to come. And Ring of Honor is a place I call home. So I'm, I'm really thankful to be here. And like they say in pro wrestling, you just never say never. You know, a quick follow-up. I know you're one of the top stars on the independent scene, uh, but one of the one of the companies coming up right now that's uh, making waves is Lucha Underground. Uh, what is the perception yeah. of yours of Lucha Underground and maybe some of the other wrestlers in your company? Is it, do you think it's good for the business? Do you think it's it's competition? What do you, how do you view it? I think it's great for the business. I, I'm a big fan of their interview style. I, I'm going to be completely honest. I've only seen a handful of their shows. I don't religiously follow Lucha Underground. Uh, but I have a lot of friends there who work there, and the fact that they get to make a living doing what they love to do, it's a different product, and different in wrestling isn't always necessarily good, but for Lucha Underground's case, it is good. Um, I think it's cool, I think it's different, and I, I think, like I said, the more places that guys have to work, and the more that people get the chance to watch pro wrestling, I think the better it is. So I think it's great, and Lucha Underground's doing awesome things. Well, a huge thanks to our guest, Adam Cole. Catch him stealing the show in Ring of Honor on Destination America every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. starting June 3rd. Tell the fans where they can support you, man. Yeah, I have a Twitter. It's at Adam Cole Pro. Also, have a website run by an awesome guy named Dan Mitchell. Uh, on there is my schedule. There's a store with some really, really cool T-shirts, guys, if you want to check them out. Uh, and then more importantly, uh, ROHWrestling.com. Uh, support the company that I love, support the company that just landed a cable uh, television deal, and uh, support pro wrestling, ROHwrestling.com. Another huge thanks to Adam Cole. Thank you for coming on the show, and good luck moving forward, man. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.